shifters, entrepreneurs on the move, with your host, Amanda Barr, bringing you power-packed 15-minute conversations with entrepreneurs who share their stories of shifting in life and business to keep on the move. Welcome to our show today. We've got a special treat. I've got Thomas Williams, two-time college national champ for the University of Southern California, five-year NFL vet, post-NFL career, a two-time author, adjunct professor, and a public speaker. And he's just getting started. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Thomas. Oh, Amanda, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's exciting. So thank you for having me, and I can't wait to dive in. Yeah, well, let's do it. I want to hear more of your backstory. You know, you've got quite a few things you've accomplished already, so take us down memory lane. All right. So uh, for me, you know, like you would mentioned in there, as, as of 2012, the highlights of my life came in about uh, all of sports, all of the things that I've done with playing football and baseball growing up. Um, I was an athlete, and I reached the pinnacle of my life just getting to the NFL. And yeah. I've got drafted 155th overall, coming out of USC, the Trojans, uh, two-time national champion, won 39 straight football games, lost five games my whole career, and I thought I was just wow. getting to the pinnacle of life and my dreams and my goals and my athletic career. And then I get drafted to the Jacksonville Jaguars, thinking that things were only going to get better. I was that close to reaching my ultimate goals and my dreams of buying my mom the big house, retiring people in my family, <laughs> rap yeah. videos, music videos, I mean, on all the magazines. The, the jewelry, the whole nine, everything. And then um, as of July 2012, I left the football field for the last time because I suffered a career-ending neck injury when I played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Ooh. And so I thought the greatest thing in my life was supposed to be for me to play football, but I found out that the greatest part of my life was actually after football and what I'm doing wow. now. Um, and so, you know, a lot of times with whether it's entrepreneurs or people who kind of strike it big, we always just kind of see them one day and then see the journey. And what I want to share today is the journey. So notice how I only talked quickly about the accomplishments of playing in the NFL, but I want to talk to the journey about how I rose to the top in another profession, uh, the entrepreneurship uh, realm and what I'm doing now currently. Uh, like you said, I, I, I wrote two books. Um, one book is for yes. middle school and high school kids called Permission to Dream. And the second book I wrote is called The Relentless Pursuit of Greatness for athletes who will transition into the play um, that they'll run for the rest of their lives because we're, we're just people for, uh, for our entire lives, but we're actually athletes for such a small part of our lives. Um, and then yeah. you also mentioned I am an adjunct professor at USC uh, helping athletes transition and navigating their process. Uh, through their freshman year and through the rest of their time in college. Um, and so for me, what I had to do as I transitioned out of playing sports into what I'm doing now is I had to do exactly what I tell people all the time. Identify your strength because your strengths are the things that will get you from what you did great in your previous career um, into your next career. And so the transferable skills. So I had to sit there. Imagine I'm on an airplane and I'm flying from the East Coast all the way back to the West Coast trying to figure out what I'm going to do with the rest of my life because I'd only put all of my eggs into the baskets of playing sports. And I thought mm -hmm. to myself, what is it that I'm going to do? And I had to ask myself the question, what do I want to do for the rest of my life? And the craziest right. thing is, is I didn't have that answer because from the time I was a little kid and through all the way out through my professional career, I'd always have somebody telling me what to do, whether it was my parents at home, whether it was my teachers at school, whether it was my coaches on the field, somebody always made the decisions for me. And the hardest thing is, is to answer that question, what do you want to do now? And I took out a piece of paper while on this flight, and I just started writing down. I said, okay, about the game of football, what did I love? I loved being in front of my teammates, getting them excited, revving them up right before yeah. practice, right before the game. I also like to communicate the plays coming in from the sideline from the defensive coordinator onto the, to the other players who are on the field. So I love to be in front of people, and I also love to help people shine to become their best. I mean, it was just like I used to get so excited when my teammates would be on the football field and they'd make a play, and this was from a play that I had helped them all throughout the week prepare for. I mean, it's like a, a, a parent who 
your, your, your son or your daughter comes home with it A and you stick it on the refrigerator at the end of the week, you know, it's that spelling, spelling test or you're, you're a leader in a company and you help the employees and the people who are working with you, you help them rise. I mean, they, they had that big presentation that you help them prepare for and you get ready for. Or it could just be maybe you were helping out a neighbor who was going through a tough time and you see them get that breakthrough. I used to love that. And so I yeah. said I wanted to do something like this for the rest of my life. And I said, that's great, but what is it that that looks like? And so somebody shared with me um, after I landed back in L.A. and I started to navigate the transition pro- transition process of, Thomas, there's people who are motivational speakers. I was like, you mean people get paid to, like, help <laughs> other people out? And they're like, yeah, they get paid. And they actually yeah. get paid really well. And so okay. I started looking at the comparisons between, you know, how much I made in the NFL and how much I want to make for the rest of my life. And I was like, wow, you mean to tell me I can get paid just as much standing on stage or in a crowd with a microphone in front of an audience just as much as I got paid running into other grown men for four quarters? And you don't have to get a concussion. You don't have to hurt your back. You don't have to hurt your knee. You mean to tell me I can get paid the same amount? Sign me up. And so from that moment forward, I was able to identify that this is a path. This is a lane. And now one of the secret superpowers that, that a lot of athletes have when they're playing their sports is they have the ability and this ability to be able to focus, to be able to put all of their energy and all of their being into an avenue, into a lane. And that's their sport. And that's why they get to a really high level of, of performing. And so I said, okay, if I want to be just as good at football, uh, just as good at public speaking and in, in, in this realm as I was at football, Thomas, what is it that you got to do? You got to spend an, an insane amount of time studying your craft, developing your craft, developing your voice. I mean, no different than when you were playing sports and you used to watch all of these other players, you know, you would study them, you'd study your opponent, you'd study yourself, you'd study your playbook. So study your craft the same exact way. And so as I started to develop this passion for public speaking, I said, what else can I do? And a funny story is, you know, never say never. And I'll never forget, it was right around 2014 and I met an individual, um, but I, don't, I can't remember his name, but I met this guy, and he said, what do you do? And I told him what I did. I said, I'm a public speaker. And he said, okay, great. What's the name of your book? And I said, huh? He said, what's the name of your book? And I said, I don't have a book. I'm a public speaker. And so a few days later, I saw another person. And then a couple of days after that at a barbecue, I saw another person. And all three of these people said, what is the name of your book? The immediate follow-up question of when I told him what I did. And so they're telling me, you got to have a book. You got to have a book. You got to have a book. Now, Amanda, when I tell you I went into this thing blind, I tell you I went into this thing blind. I didn't know anything. (laughs) Because to be honest with you, if I knew I had to write a book, I would have never signed up for this because the day I graduated college was the day I said, I will never write another thing again in my life. Shoot. I barely (laughs) used to like to write papers. What do you mean I'm going to write a whole book? So. Daytime, right? Somebody, some, some, yeah. So somebody gave me this crazy idea. You should write a book. And I said, great. Yeah. So at that time, I met a, an editor, a storyteller, and somebody else who also yeah. wrote a book. And they basically gave me the guidelines and the blueprint of how to write a book. And I'm thinking to myself, I hated, write, pa- hated writing papers, and I hate reading books, let alone do I want to write a book. And so what somebody told me is they said, Thomas, if you write a book and you pass away, there will always be evidence and proof that you were here. And I said, yeah. wow, that's, that's, that's huge. That's legacy. That's, that's even more of an impact than I could ever have made on the football field. So I started to write this book, and I, wanted to, I had this, and this idea, this, this giant, you know, I'm going to be like Tony Robbins. I'm going to be like Les Brown. I'm going to be like Jim Rohn. I'm going to be like Zig Ziglar. I'm going to be like all of these other people, the forefathers of, you know, the public speaking, personal development, that whole realm. And I thought I was going to write this brilliant business book until my editor read it, um, the, the synopsis of the book. And she said, Thomas, this is a children's book. This is a book that you're supposed to write for kids. You're not supposed to just write this book for, for business people. And I said, kids don't have any money. She said, you're absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> she said, but let me tell you this. Yeah. The kids don't have money. But here's the thing. If you can get – if you can impact and you can touch – a, a, a kid and helping them realize and experience their values, their goals, and their dreams, one day they're going to turn into an adult and they're going to either work at a company or they're going to own a company. And who do you think they're going to be able to come back to? 
they're going to come back to you because you helped inspire them. You helped elevate them. You helped level them up. You inspired them and impacted them to get this. Thomas, your, your, your focus right now is to, is to write a kid's book. So I, that's how I wrote Permission to Dream. And it was awesome. It was great. It was very therapeutic. Um, I wrote it in a little bit over a year. And so I, nice. I was done with it. I was done with it. I'm, I'm done. I'm not writing any more books. I can't believe it. I'm out. So fast forward <laughs> three years, we come to 2015, and I was at a conference for college student athletes. And the college student-athlete conference, uh, at the very beginning of the kickoff, it was a whole bunch of academic advisors and athletic directors in this room. Um, you know, they had a panel discussion, and they were, everybody was talking and isolating in the problems. What are the problems with student-athletes? What are the problems with athletes? What are the problems about the transition? So on and so forth. And I just felt this crazy amount of rage inside of my heart when uh, we left that room. And I think it was after dinner, and I went back up to my room, and I was just, like, filled with rage and, like, so much – so much energy because only thing I took away from that panel discussion was all of the problems. And it kept like everybody kept underlining all of the problems. And this is when I found out that I'm a solution oriented individual, because at the very end of it, I said, but who talks about the solution? And I just went to sleep and I couldn't sleep that night. And then I woke up the next morning and then I got that, that knock on, you know, your heart and, and emotion strings where it said, okay, it's time, time to write another book. And I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> I wrote one. I'm done. That was it. I can just move on to focusing on speaking. And so the conversation uh, from God came back to me and it realized that, you know what, you have all of this passion. You have all of this information. You have all of this experience for the people who are supposed to read your book, the college athletes who never go pro, the 99%, the rest of the world focuses on the 1% that will go pro. You know, all the financial advisors talk about somebody needs to teach these athletes how to, you know, manage their money. Somebody needs to teach these athletes, uh, you know, people who, who cling on to them and ask them for, for money and they just kind of ride their coattails. They need to teach the professional athletes. And in my mind, I was like, well, who's teaching the 99% that won't go pro? Because the yeah. number that is 100% accurate is that 100% of athletes will retire and 100% of athletes will transition into the next phase of their lives. So who's focused yeah. on the demographic that will never play after their college sports and will never get the signing bonus? Who won't get the insurance? Who won't get the benefits? Who won't get the stardom? Who won't have the network? Who won't have the opportunity? And that's what my second book focused on. The Relentless Pursuit of Greatness is for that athlete. And so writing the book, I didn't necessarily just want to make it a book. I wanted to make it a playbook because as athletes, we have these playbooks. We have, you know, in the weight room, uh, we have a workout book on the practice field with our teams, with our jerseys, with our coaches. They give us playbooks. There's a syllabus in the classroom. But the real life stuff, nobody gives us a playbook for that. And so the Relentless Pursuit of Greatness is a playbook for college student athletes. It just asks you little simple basic questions of, you know, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses as an athlete? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses as a student? And then by going through a little a couple of these different exercises, you'll develop a, hey, this is the field that I want to try to explore when I'm done playing. You know, for a financial budget, just think about how much money can you spend in a day just for yourself? How much money do you spend on, on your rent, on your utilities, on your gas, phone? Just it's, it's, it's not this broad scope of things. It's just very simple and, um, you know, it's really applicable for the athletes to understand that, hey, even though no one taught you in college, doesn't mean you're not supposed to know it when you leave there. And if you don't know it when you leave there, it's unfortunate because you'll be penalized, and the penalty of not knowing sometimes is excruciating. And so um, that's what the Relentless Pursuit of Greatness focused on, and that was 2016, and I've just kind of been – focused on the areas of helping people grow, middle school and high school kids, and athletes. And now with the most recent uh, addition, I would say maybe in the last two and a half years, has been um, I've been an adjunct professor at USC, like I said, helping the college athletes transition into sports, or I'm sorry, into college, um, so that they can really yeah. get a hands-on um, just guidance and mentorship as they, as they navigate their process through college. Um, so that's uh, – that's 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 me in a nutshell. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thank you for taking us into your world. And I love the book. You know, I'm an author as well. And I think the book took 10 times longer than it should have. Uh, but it's all about going through that process and getting something out that will be there forever. And for those that are, you know, listening into this podcast today, you can do it too. <laughs> if we can do mm. it, you can do it. I love that. Yeah, we I can. I love that. Um, I would love to actually dive in for a few minutes into some of the shifts because you had some big things happen. First of all, I'm so glad you're okay. You had a crazy injury, and I'm so glad you're okay, and that shifted your life, and now you're on this journey that you're on today and and, and making such an impact into these students and these athletes' lives. What are some of those shifts? It could be life things that happen in the midst of these things that you want to talk about, some things that might be helpful to those that were listening today and how you kind of made it through. Yeah, I think there's, you know, what I learned through one of the biggest transitions of my life was going from playing sports to not playing sports. And inside of that was we spend so much time on the things that don't matter that we forget and neglect the things that absolutely matter. So because mm -hmm. I was so focused on playing sports, I prepared for what I hoped for and I neglected for what I knew. Now, what I mean when I say that is that I prepared for the NFL, which was a very slight chance, right? 99% don't play professional sports. So I put a lot yeah. of my hope in there and a lot of my focus into what I hoped for and I neglected what I knew. I knew that at one day, whether it was 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road, I was going to stop playing. So I was going to spend more yeah. of my life not playing the game of football than I would playing it, right? So I played from the time I was 14 to the time I was 27. So yeah. I learned that, hey, moving forward, Thomas, okay, dream big, but you still have to do the little things. You still have to, yeah. at 30-something years old, you still have to think about retirement. Like, at 30-something years old now, I need to prepare for retirement. I need to prepare for being a father. What does that look like? Um, so that part was scary because I was in a very um, uncertain, unsure place in my entire life. As an athlete, you're never, you're never given the opportunity to be vulnerable in the sense of going, I don't know. Because I don't know mm. means I... I'm incompetent, I'm the weakest, I'm not strong, I'm not what you think I'm supposed to be. All of the football players that are listening, all the people who watch football players understand that that's Superman. But yeah. we don't allow Superman to turn into Clark Kent, and that's what my transition did. It made me take off my uniform, literally. Take off my football helmet, which has a mask on it, literally. And I had to mm. deal with the situation of who I am as a real human being, a real person. And since I was able to navigate through that, then I was able to focus again on what do I want to do. See, um, and we're learning now, right, with the, with the current landscape and temperature of, of what's going on in the world, that yeah. all of the things that we used to – we use, we use to protect ourselves from my job, my, my status, my, my money, my car, my house, my, all of this. That doesn't matter anymore. So once that's taken away from you, then you have a choice. You can look in the mirror or you can pretend that it doesn't exist. So what I had to do was I had to yeah. look in the mirror and I would say, Thomas, this is who you are. This is a lot of the things in life that you don't know. You don't know how to you don't know, you don't know about money. You don't know about careers. You don't know how to be a public speaker. You don't know. And you know what? That's okay because you have a PhD in football. That's okay. But now take yourself and be humble. Serve yourself some humble pie and, and now ask all <laughs> the questions of the stuff that you yeah. don't know. Um, and so yeah. that was a hard shift. It was a hard shift of the reality of, you know, the the family dynamics. Everybody used to look at me as, hey, Thomas is a football player. Can we get some money? Thomas is a football player. He'll fix it. Thomas is a football player. He'll do it. Like, no, I'm not anymore. Right now, I need the people who I've been showing up for, I need them to show up for me. Yeah. yeah. There was another part about net. Yeah, so then there was another part of, 
Now you have to reinvent yourself. You have to recreate yourself. I'll never forget the time when I went to a USC football game and I was talking to an individual who I'd had a relationship with, you know, cool relationship for like a decade. And he had asked me, he said, hey, who are you playing for now? And I said, nobody. And literally the conversation ended. That's all what? the conversation was. And that let me know that, okay, this is to be expected from other people who I was just their football friend. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, yeah. there's, there's so many cases of that. I mean, there's, there's literally time and time and time again about re, rediscovering yourself. Um, you have to reinvent yourself. And I think an extremely important lesson that I learned is that it is completely okay to not know because you've never been taught. And if you've never been taught something, you never learned it, then you don't know it. Yeah. And then going and finding the way to get it. And I think that's, that's powerful. You know, I just have to, the Mac, the, the thing, I think there's a lot of people, and maybe not even just in sports, but I think you brought it so like alive in your story of that mask that, that we can wear sometimes by the roles that we play and what we do and when it all comes down to it, it's just like it's who you are and being able to take that mask off and share. And I think today it's more than ever. And with all this going on, people really just want to see who you are. And, and even those that are in these roles and, and, and in playing sports, I think people want to see the backstory. The, who are these people? What are they dealing with? What's the good and the bad? Like, what, what are they dealing with? So I just appreciate you kind of pulling all that away and, and telling us like the tough stuff and what's happening and, and what you really went through and the shift that you were taking. I'm sure it wasn't feeling good when the people that you touched and knew wouldn't talk to you because you weren't in sports. Like that's crazy, but it happens to not just you. It happens to others. I don't think anybody talks about these things. Yeah, no, you're right. And it's, it's, uh, it goes, you, you, we all go through something so that we can share it and that, you know, this liberates someone else. Just like when somebody told yeah. me, it liberated me. So it is, uh, we go through experiences so that we can pass along the lessons and the knowledge from them and not so necessarily so that we can carry the pain. Yeah. Yeah. And bring light, bring, bring light to the situation, bring light to the world and make a difference. And I know that you, what you're sharing and what you're doing in your books and all the things you've got going for you and all your speaking engagements. I mean, we are definitely in support of you and, and you touch an amazing, um, amazing number of lives across the United States, the world. And I would love to know, you gave us so many great nuggets. I mean, I'm sure you, you're just packed with them. But if you could give us like one big nugget to kind of leave with, it's like, you know, what has kept you you moving forward? I mean, our show is Shifters, Entrepreneurs on the Move. What keeps you moving forward and in pursuit of, greatness for yourself as yeah. you move through life. Yeah. I, um, I went, I'll never forget. Um, I'll never forget the first time I ever went to hear somebody publicly speak. And I won't, I won't say who it was because I, I'm all about, you know, elevating. And I don't think this story necessarily elevated the human, the individual, but uh, yeah. there was a, there was a, there was a book and I, uh, well, there was a movie and I believe there was a book based off of their life. And I'll never forget, like, I took my mom, we, you know, we jumped in the car, we drove about 30 minutes, went to the venue, big old auditorium, and this person spent, you know, an hour, hour and a half telling us his life story. And I was just, I remember leaving, and my mom asked me, like, you know, how was that, or how do you feel? Something in that, that magnitude. And I felt empty. And I was mm. still playing football. I still was early in my football career, and I never knew – that if I would ever get to, I never thought I would actually become a speaker, if that makes sense, or a facilitator or a teacher. And I said, if I ever do that, I want, I want to share a story, but I also want to share with people how they can do it too. Because his yeah. story was all how he did it. And I mm -hmm. was like, mm, I just left feeling so empty. So for me, I made a promise to myself that I would never speak on or about things I'm not doing myself. So what drives me, what keeps me going is exactly that. I never want somebody in the audience to tell me or ask me the question of, yeah, but, but how does that apply to you? Or how are you mm. doing that currently? And it stumps me. So I'm constantly, like there's a couple of things that I'm, that I'm working on currently right now 
that I'll, I will be able to, one, provide insight through experience and, two, opportunities because I have the platform to do it. So I need to pursue, study, and then accomplish some things right now um, in 2020 that yeah. I'll be able to pass along through experience. I won't just be able to say in hindsight or what you should do or uh, if you were, if I were you. I, I love to speak from experience to give real knowledge so that's what wakes me up, you know, every day. And that's what has me continuously, you know, thriving and wanting to grow is that I'm not the guy who just t- says, you know, in my day, I can give a real life example of something that recently took place. Love it. Love it. That's awesome. Well, I, as you're accomplishing and driving forward and doing so many great things, for those that are listening today, we're going to obviously include all your contact information in in the description of the podcast episode, but I would love for those that are just listening today, where can they get a hold of you? How can they get in touch with you and, um, you know, get your book, everything, connect with you? Yeah, so I, I still have one, you know, like a social media, but I am on a social media cleanse right now, so I haven't, <laughs> I haven't posted anything since December 31st um, okay. of last year. So yeah. you can go to my website, which is thomasrwilliams.com, um, through uh, message me, and I think there's some other things. So people, people from the team, they'll, they'll receive the message. They'll be able to relay it to me. And so you can book me. Um, you know, we can set up Zoom calls, webinars, um, until we get to or through this, this current, you know, situation, and then going back to, like, the live events. But, but definitely can book me through webinars and through Zoom and stuff like that. Um, and, and that's where you can find me there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today to share your story, to, to, to really, I, I just feel like even myself, you're not going to leave anybody empty on this podcast because it is so (laughs) full of great things and I can't thank you enough. And we are definitely rooting you on. Can't wait to see what you have to come and um, wishing you all the best, Thomas. Uh, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. And thank you guys so much for, for all the wonderful things that you're doing in the pr- uh, platform that you're providing. We hope you enjoyed the episode today. We appreciate each one of you for listening and hope you left inspired and motivated to keep on the move. If you think this episode might help or inspire someone else, please share. Don't forget to subscribe and keep in the loop to hear more incredible stories of entrepreneurs like yourself on the move. Thank you for our supporters, RTB Capital Group, Financial Powerhouse, CallCast, and Power Podcasting. Now, get out there and keep on the move.